today I've got a nice geometry problem that comes from the website Cut the Knot, which is a nice mathematically themed website with lots of math puzzles and nice results. Okay, so let's see what our goal is. So we've got a right triangle. Inside of that right triangle, we have several things inscribed. The most important at the moment is this rectangle. And one of the sides of that rectangle is maybe like a subsegment of the hypotenuse of that right triangle. And then in the open portions, we've inscribed these three circles. And then our goal is to show the following result. So if this rectangle is positioned so that its area is maximum, so that means we could extend the length here, but that's obviously going to move the vertex into the interior a little bit. Then show that we have the following nice relationship between the radii of these circles. So we have R1 squared plus R2 squared equals R3 squared, where I have this color coding. That's the radius of this squared plus the radius of this squared is the radius of the largest one squared. The radius of the one next to the right angle. Okay, and notice we've got circles inscribed inside of right triangles, which motivates the following classic result, which we will need. And that is, if you've simply got a right triangle, I'll say it has side length x, y, and z, and a circle inscribed inside of that tri right triangle, can we find r in terms of x, y, and z? Okay, and our method will be to break this triangle into a couple of sub-triangles, if you will. Okay, so we're gonna start by taking a line segment from the center of the circle down to where the circle and the triangle intersect. And this is also gonna have length r because that's a radius of a circle. And then we're gonna do the same thing up in this direction as well. And that'll have radius r as well. Then finally, we're gonna combine this together with a line segment from the center of the circle to this vertex way out here. So let's see, I can get that fairly straight like this. But now let's notice that I've built two right triangles. So there's one right angle dealing with this lower left triangle, and here's a right angle dealing with that lower right triangle. Okay. But now notice by the side, side, side theorem, these triangles are in fact congruent. Well, notice they share an R here, and then they share this line segment. But then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to show that this length is equal to this length, which is equivalent in this case to saying by side, 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 they are congruent triangles. But let's notice that the length from this point to this vertex out here is easy to calculate. It's simply y minus r. That's because this distance right here is simply r because that completes this like square of radius or of side length r there. But that makes this length here y minus r as well because like I said, those are congruent triangles. And now we're going to play exactly the same game up here in this upper left portion. So we're going to throw a line segment from there to there. And then those two triangles that we've created are also congruent. It's easy to calculate this to be x minus r. So this is also x minus r. But now we can calculate the hypotenuse two different ways. From the given quantity, we're given that the hypotenuse has length z, but then also by the sum of these two line segments, we have x minus r plus y minus r, which simplifies to x plus y minus 2r. And then from here, we'll square this entire equation, and that'll give us quite a bit of simplification. Okay. So if we square z, we'll get z squared, but then by the Pythagorean theorem, that's x squared plus y squared. Then we have to square this 
trinomial, this x plus y minus 2r squared. And multiplying that out, we'll see that we get x squared plus y squared plus 4r squared plus 2xy minus 4xr minus 4yr. So that's after a decent amount of calculation, but that's what we end up with. So let's notice that the x squared and the y squared will cancel, and that gives us a quadratic equation for r. In fact, we have 4r squared, and then maybe we would write this as minus 4 times x plus y r, and then plus 2xy. So like I said, that's a quadratic equation where we're viewing r as the variable. Well, we can in fact apply the quadratic formula to this, and this is no big deal. And what we'll end up with is the following value for r. So r will be equal to x plus y, and then minus the square root of x squared plus y squared, and then all over two. So like I said, that's exactly what you get out of the quadratic formula. Here you take the negative portion of the quadratic formula because otherwise you'd have a circle of radius that would not fit inside of this triangle. That being said, I think there's some meaning attached to a circle of that radius. Maybe post in the comments if you know what the circle of that radius like means geometrically. Okay, but now we know that x squared plus y squared equals z squared by the Pythagorean theorem. So this in fact simplifies to x plus y minus z over two. And that's our radius of our inscribed triangle. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's keep that in the back of our minds as we move on to our main problem. Okay, so moving on to the main problem, I'm gonna introduce some named points here. So I'll call this out here point A, this here point B, and this here point C. And then maybe after that, let's name some more. So let's maybe name this point right here D, this one E, this one F, and then finally this one up here G. And then I'd like to name some lengths as well. So let's maybe say that the length of the side opposite the vertex is length, well, same letter but lowercase. So that means the length here will be lowercase a, the length here will be lowercase b, and then the length here will be lowercase c. So, you know, lowercase c kind of looks like uppercase c, but now I think it's okay. So notice from this setup, from this notation, I should say, we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared by the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so now we wanna make a starting observation, and this starting observation, maybe together with our lemma, our little warm up, we'll essentially figure out, finish this whole thing off. And this starting observation is on the similarity of several triangles. Notice there are four main triangles in this situation. The largest triangle, A, B, C, and then the next one would be maybe this one over here, E, D, C. And in fact, those are similar, triangle E, D, C. And then we've also got one, let's see, over here, A, E, F, and that's similar to each of those as well, A, E, F. And then finally, we've got one last triangle up here, B, D, G, or maybe D, B, G. And that's similar to all of these as well. So in other words, all of the triangles in our situation are similar. Okay, and then we can actually do this very, very quickly by the angle, angle, angle theorem. And so let's maybe have two color-coded um, labels for our angles. Maybe we'll have a purple angle as well as an orange angle. Okay. So let's notice that this is a right angle. That means that the sum of these two are 90 degrees. So this plus this is 90 degrees. So purple plus orange is 90 degrees. Okay, but 
check it out. This is also a right angle. And then by the sum angle formula for a triangle, we know that this plus this also has to be 90 degrees. So this is also purple. And I guess I know we know these add to 90 degrees because this is a straight line here. And now we can play the same game chasing the angles all over the place. So this is a right angle, this is purple, that means this is orange because orange plus purple plus 90 has to equal 180. And then likewise, this up here is purple and then this up here is orange. Okay, so now we've labeled all of these triangles and they all have same angle measures, which means they're all similar triangles. Okay, good. But since they're similar triangles, notice that we know that CD can be written. Well, let's see where CD is. So CD can be written as a multiple of CB. So maybe I'll call that multiple A times T. But then CE will be the same multiple of B. So here we're using the fact that this triangle here is similar to the large triangle. So this would be equal to B times T. And then likewise, let's see what's left over. DE must be equal to CT for the same kind of reason. Okay, so let's get some of those measurements into the situation. So we've got this measurement right here is equal to BT. Oh, but that means this one right here is equal to B times one minus T because these two have to sum to B. Okay, and then likewise, this one is equal to AT, but then by a very similar reason, this one up here has to be equal to A times one minus T. And then we don't get the same action up here in the hypotenuse just because of how things are broken up. And now let's apply similarity along with some of these new measurements that we've just calculated. So now let's notice that EF, so let's see where that is, EF divided by B times one minus T, so divided by B times one minus T must be equal to the similar quotient that's occurring in the big triangle. But that similar quotient in the big triangle is A over C. Just because B times one minus T is the hypotenuse of this FEA triangle. Okay. But then that gives us this nice equation for E times F. So E times F is A times B times one minus T all over C. And you might say real quick, well, why did we find EF? Well, we found EF because it's the length or the width, if you will, of our rectangle. And we know this measurement of our rectangle by our calculation that we did right here. Okay, so let's look at that. So we have the area of our rectangle. Maybe I'll put this area boxed in yellow because our rectangle is yellow. So that's gonna be equal to the length DE times the length EF, just by the normal formula for area of a rectangle. But by our setup, we have that's CT times AB times one minus T over C. Okay, so let's see, that's gonna simplify to A times B times T minus T squared. But notice that's a downward facing parabola and we can calculate its vertex using standard rules for finding vertices or maybe by doing some calculus. But it's not too hard to show that this maximum occurs when T equals one half. So like I said, T equals one half builds this maximum. So maybe we should say this here, maximum at T equals one half. Okay, so now we know this, let's maybe redraw some of the lengths in this triangle to use this fact that T is one half. Okay, so there we have it. We have all of those lengths filled in. So that means this has length B over two, A over two, C over two. 
This isn't to scale anymore, but this is b over two. By our previous calculation, this is now a times b over two c. This is likewise a times b over two c. Which, what does that leave us with? That leaves us to find this length right here as well as this length right here. But each of these upper and lower triangles are right triangles. So that means we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find these lengths. Okay, so that being said, let's maybe just jump to having those lengths calculated. Okay, so after doing those quick Pythagorean theorem calculations, we get this remaining length right here, AF, is B squared over 2C, and this one up here, BG, is A squared over 2C. And now we can apply that previous result to calculate all of those radii. So notice R1 will be equal to, well, if you recall, it was the sum of the sides div minus the hypotenuse divided by two. So that'll be A plus B minus C all over four, because it's like, like I said, it's divided by two. Okay, but for the rest of these, we might actually be helped if we complete this denominator so that we have a 2C in each of those. So we'll write that as AC over 2C and BC over 2C. So let's see, R2 using this rule will be, well, the sum of those minus that. So that'll end up being AB plus B squared minus BC all over 4C. And then finally, R3 can be calculated exactly the same way. So let's see, the sum of this and this minus this one. So we'll have A squared plus AB minus AC all over 4C. And then while we're at it, let's make sure we have denominators of 4C everywhere. So let's multiply this by C, we'll multiply this by C, and then here we'll have AC plus BC. And then from here, it's really just a symbolic manipulation slog to get to the end. So I don't think that's super interesting to watch, so I'll maybe leave that as a homework. All of the interesting stuff is in the setup. So as a homework, show that R1 squared plus R2 squared is in fact equal to R3 squared, given these values of R1, R2, and R3. And then of course along the way, you'll obviously have to use the fact that we're in a right triangle in the first place. So you'll use the fact that a squared plus B squared equals C squared. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.